Hello and welcome. It's Kane here again, coming back at you with the my the most requested video uh, from you guys, and that is the Germany Min Max uh, guide. So we're going to go through pretty much everything today. So I'm going to talk quickly, pay attention. Uh, to start with, I'm going to have a huge shout out to KLS, who's developed the Steam guide uh, for Germany, the German Reich, which I'm going to be pretty much adapting. I made a few uh, variations to the guide and I'll go through the differences between KLS's strategy and my strategy and a few of the things you can choose between. But yeah, just, just to begin with, huge shout out to KLS. I'll leave a link to the guide in the description so you guys can check it out, have it open while you're playing. Highly recommend it, it's very good. All right, now let's, let's begin. So one thing I'm gonna tell you when you're playing Germany, you are the leader of the Alliance. So let's get that out of the way really quickly. You've gotta be the boss, but you've gotta be firm, but not too harsh. You can't be a dictator, you've gotta be a leader. All right, and that means the game doesn't actually begin in this screen at all here. What are you talking about, Kane? Where does it begin? It begins in the lobby screen. That's where the game begins. It begins in the Discord channel, okay? That's when the multiplayer game begins, okay? Vet your Romania. Vet your Hungary. Vet your Italy. Make sure Hungary knows he's going to be controlling the air. Make sure he knows how to rush fighter 3s. Make sure Romania, if you need him to get fighter 2s, knows how to get fighter 2s. Italy, make sure you know him. The, make sure he knows in the current meta that uh, he's basically going to be a glorified plane production for the Axis now. Speak to your Spanish player. Find out what strategy he's doing for the Civil War. Is he falling back behind the river? Or is he rushing the Madrid airport? Find out, okay? Because things can go to hell in a handbasket really quickly when you're playing Germany. So get as much out of the way before the game starts. Get as much of that talking out of the way, strategizing out of the way before the game starts, okay? It's your responsibility. You're Germany. You're the leader of the Axis. They're relying on you. All right. Rock and roll, we're in the game screen now. What's the first thing we do? So we grab all of these divisions, create an army group. Then we separate these four, create a new one. These, oh, so these five, these five or four, depending on your choice, are gonna be your Spanish volunteers, okay? The rest of them, these guys we change to Panzer divisions. Whoa, that's crazy, Kane. Why are you doing that? I'm gonna show you. So we change them to Panzer divisions, suddenly, we have a lot more guns, okay? We've got a surplus of guns. What's the first thing we do? While the game's still even paused, we go to Ethiopia. We start Lend Lease. We send them 4,000 guns. What? What? Why are we sending 4,000 guns to Ethiopia? For a very good question. We're doing that for Army XP. Once those guns get there, we're gonna, and they, the Ethiopians start equipping them and fighting the Italian player, we're going to start getting a hell of a lot of army XP from that combat, and we desperately need army XP. Why do we need army XP, Kane? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you exactly why in just a second. So, in most multiplayer games, you know, every multiplayer game worth playing, armored volunteers for the Spanish Civil War are banned. So we send infantry. Now, what's the problem with sending infantry? Our infantry template is absolute trash. We need army XP to be able to send a fighting force that's going to be out of reckon with the Soviet Union's mountain volunteers that he will send to Spain. So we use the XP that we get from the Ethiopian conflict with Italy to field a good enough, a 40 width, if we can, infantry division. So we'll just make that a little bit faster here. So we fill this up with a 40 width division with artillery as well. So our standard, our standard 14-4. All right, rock and roll. Now this is the ideal scenario. A lot of the times you will not be finished by the time you will not be ready. Okay, you won't have a finished uh, template. That's okay. Just make sure it's as good as possible. Now, next thing. So this is basically while the game's still paused, we queue up as many Panzer divisions as possible and we deploy them. Why are we queuing up Panzer divisions? Because they cost less guns and we can force deploy them out. Why is that important? Because we need 82 divisions, field of divisions, to be able to send five uh, volunteers to the Spanish Civil War. Incredibly important. Now, this is where K the KLS guide and my guide kind of, my suggestions kind of uh, vary. So I like to send five volunteers to the Spanish Civil War. KLS only sends four. So what's the, uh, the trade-offs between this? Okay, so ideally you want the Italian player to be able to grind the Ethiopian war for as long as possible, or as long as the rules in the Discord server that you're playing allow this means he gets more and more army xp a better better and a better and better general okay now if you send five volunteers you will need the war in ethiopia to end as soon as possible once the civil war uh, triggers okay that means 
he will miss out on time training his divisions, get, sorry, miss out on getting army XP and miss out on making his general better. So if you trade off and only send four, he can actually continue this war. You'll actually keep getting army XP and so will he, all right? So it's kind of a trade off here, but sometimes, but you'll be outnumbered, remember, you'll be, so you need to have one more volunteer to send, okay? So kind of a trade off. Uh, it's up to you. I've had some horrible experiences in the Spanish Civil War, so I like to send five, but you kind of pay for it, right? Uh, just pay attention. The Soviet Union also will send guns to Ethiopia. If he doesn't send guns, you know that you're going to have an easier time. So, you know, be aware. Now, critical thing, all right? Critical, critical thing. Once the lend lease has arrived, start another lend lease and modify the lend lease when it's almost about to finish, all right? To uh, one gun a month. Okay, this is very important. Currently, there is a bug in the game. Okay, so just go units monthly one. All right. Currently, there's a bug. If you don't do that, if you don't have a constant lend lease, you won't get army any more army XP, and that is crippling. Okay, you don't want to have wasted four thousand guns not to get army XP. All right. Now, just be aware the Panzer Division template is going to be using your artillery, so you have to use ten crucial army XP to remove that, so that your fielded infantry divisions actually start receiving. Uh, the artillery. You can also also make sure you make the infantry division template elite. Right, so KLS's template suggests that you go to, uh, you research the first mass assault doctrine. This is minimum training level minus 10%, okay? So the way you do that, you glitch it. Boom, and you research mass assault, look at that. So you can get that 10% uh, training difference and then these guys can train out more. And he actually does cavalry instead, okay? You can do either one. I just like Panzer instead. That's just kind of the way I do it. There's, a, I think they basically use the same amount of guns. So infantry equipment, 250. Infantry, so 520, so that's why I actually use uh, Panzers because they require less guns. But Kalos only sends four volunteers to Spain. I send five. So it's up to you, you can decide which one. So make sure, and it's critically important, make sure you deploy them as soon as they are ready, okay? Deploy them, and then if you're going for five volunteers, queue up another 26 divisions. That will give you exactly the number of divisions you need to send five volunteers to Spain. All right, next thing. You send volunteers to Spain, make sure you do that immediately, as soon as the Civil War triggered. But there's a here's a, a glitch that you can take advantage of. Let's say the Spanish Civil War triggers early. You're not ready. You don't have the divisions in the field. You don't have the army XP. What do you tell your Spanish player? Not to click on the event. Depending on the rules in your Discord, you can hold the event for a month and it will auto choose the nationalists, okay? So that gives you another whole month to deploy your divisions to get the army XP you need from Italy, for Italy to finish the Civil War so the world tension, this is critical, okay? So world tension doesn't go over 5%, all right? Over 5%, why is that important? Because it means UK can get shadow scheme. Now, certain strategies revolve around UK delaying general rearmament and shadow scheme. Sometimes you'll see German players go Rhineland first, where even though they're not noobs, Rhineland first is generally the sign of a noob. And that's basically they're trading off general rearmament, to get, giving them a shadow scheme early to trade off for general rearmament later on. It's a different kind of meta. But, you want to generally avoid giving them anything, either Shadow Scheme or General Rearmament. So that's kind of your trade-off again. All right, so you sent your volunteers to the Spanish Civil War. He needs to know whether he's going to fall back behind this river, fall back behind these mountains, or rush the airport. Find out what he's comfortable with and do that. Generally, falling, I think falling back behind the river is safer. Your volunteers get here and you just shadow the Soviet volunteers. You've sent guns to Ethiopia, so your template's going to be looking more and more like this, and that's going to be good enough to take on the Soviet mountaineers that he's going to send to try and wreck you, okay? So just shadow his volunteers, and you just wait for the uh, the communist AI on Spanish on Republican Spain to waste its manpower. And you just shadow the Russian volunteers. Wherever they go, you go, and you just block them in this defense. This defensive position is very strong. Now, if, hell, if everything goes to hell real quick, you can fall back to this mountain the mountains here, okay? Make sure you're defending on the mountains, not the forests behind the mountains, because otherwise you'll get broken. Okay, so all really isn't lost for the Spanish unless you lose uh, Galicia. If you lose that, it's kind of over. But even, even if it looks really dire, it's often recoverable, okay? So, with this strategy that I've outlined for you today, you'll have, I think, generally no problem in um, successfully winning the Spanish Civil War, doing what you need to do, having a strong early game. All right, now we're gonna talk about your focus order really quickly. 
So the first focus you should take in list of rural state you should take Rhineland is Reich Autobahn, okay? Then West Wall, then Industrial Effort 1, then Industrial Effort 2. You want to rush, you want to ru absolutely rush your civilian factories. And the places you want to build, and you want to build civilian factories in the high infrastructure areas, okay? Now Reich Autobahn is also going to increase the infrastructure in those critical areas, okay? So these ones here, it's going to make them 100%, so just keep building civilian factories here, all right? So we rush down here, then we go to Army Innovations, then we go Treaty with the USSR. As soon as we've done Treaty with the USSR, that gives us the Panzer threes ahead of time, we start researching them, all right? Now just remember, some rules have to force you to do Rhineland at a certain time, so we kind of, otherwise you generally want to delay Rhineland. Okay, cool. So it's raced quickly here, let's slow it down a little bit, let's talk a little bit about our research, okay? All right, so the first thing we want to research is basic machine tools. Construction one. Electronic me uh, mechanical engineering and then our land doctrine. So depending on whether we've done this glitch here. Germany should always, of course, want to go down mobile warfare. All right, so this is basically our, our startup, our introduction to research. The critical thing I want you guys to think about is you want for Germany is you need to actually rush to construction four. So how do we do that? I'll just use the cheat engine for a little bit. So we're gonna, these focuses here give us 50% bonus to construction, 50% bonus to construction. So the critical thing, we actually wanna get research construction two ahead of time. That way we can use, we use our 50% bonuses for construction three and construction four. This is super critical and super powerful. All right, construction for Germany, you know, really early is super strong. We always want to do that. So uh, that's obviously the way we want to go. Now, the next tra question is whether you go concentrated or dispersed. KLS always recommends concentrated. I like dispersed. Uh, just keep in mind the trade. The big, the big question, the big thing is concentrated is better than dispersed after four hundred days of the factory being in existence. Until you, you need your factories for four to be producing every, what they're producing for 400 days for concentrated to be better than dispersed. So if you're gonna keep adding more factories on, the more factories you keep adding on, uh, the better dispersed is, and then eventually there comes a point where you've already got so many factories that concentrated is better. So yeah, you know, it's, it's debatable. I think most of the best players go concentrated. I think I'm one of the only players that go dispersed. I, I still like dispersed. I, I can't prove it mathematically, but I, I seem to have better results with Dispersed, it's just a feeling. But KLS, keep in mind, a lot of the best players recommend you go down concentrated. Okay, now we're gonna talk about this most, the second most important thing, I got one of the most important things to do, and this is you'll do this while the game is still paused, okay? It's what to produce, all right? What's the level of production? So you can vary between five and 10 guns. Five is kind of cheaping it. KLS does five guns, I will remind you of that. Uh, this many tanks, you want a least whole line of fighters. You want to get rid of tactical bombers. You can choose whether you want close air support. Uh, we want just one motorized and we can produce some artillery, okay? So you can vary, uh, this is about as many light tanks as you really need. Uh, but you can vary and then just add on more planes. And you can cheap out on, say, support equipment if you want more planes, okay? You'll need to, uh, I trade from the very beginning. Uh, trade from the very beginning. Okay, just make sure you're not getting it from um, allied countries, okay? And just trade for the, the planes, okay? Make sure you've got enough for the planes, but nothing else. There you go, the planes and the tanks, actually. So this can really vary. You can take off the other the more fighters and change it to CAS. You can take off these fighters and put it to tanks. You can take off these fighters and put it to guns. You can put more to artillery. You can don't ever put more than the one motorized, okay? It's up to you. Just be aware, watch. Watch the allied plane count, okay? Watch the allied plane count. Be in, talk to your Italian player. Is he building planes earlier? Is he waiting for fighter threes? Speak to Hungary. Make a watch the USA, okay? Make watch his plane count, all right? 
Check him as he building lots of planes and then, you know, vary it from where you go. Uh, have you played with these guys before, the, play, the people on the Allies before? What are their normal strategies? Uh, vary it for that. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the kind of tanks that you want. So and the kind of templates that you want for Germany. All right. I recommend, highly recommend the early light game, early light tank build as Germany. Uh, I think it's very strong. So what that entails is getting, and this is also a very important timing thing. So before treaty with the USSR, okay, we want to have researched uh, light SPGs and uh, light flak panzers, okay? So light anti-air, all right. This enables us, once we've got those produced, once we've got those researched, this actually allows us to build the light tank division that I recommend. And you can vary this division as you require, okay? But we'll just go through it a little bit now. So that's that consists of four motorized, a uh, bunch of light tanks, And once these guys are done, and remember, it also depends on the rules for your server, on your Discord server, whether they limit the number of like, um, kind of, oh, we'll show you here. Easier just to show you. All right. So we chuck on some light SPGs and then light anti-air. All right, 40 width. We're cool. Now let's have a look. 34 anti-air, and we've got a bunch of soft attack from the SPGs. This is a pretty standard template. This is the one KLS uh, pretty much recommends at this moment, to my knowledge. You can change it out. Say so you can change these guys out if you want. The light tanks. Oops. And just this means you're just producing more light tanks, or you can just up have more anti-air. It's up to you. Uh, so this will give you more anti air. This just gives you more insurance if the if the air war is contested and maybe there's cas. It's up to you. It's a trade off. Okay. Uh, obviously, you want to use as much the army XP. You want to grind Spain out for as much army XP and Ethiopia for as much army XP as possible. And this can be your light tank uh, division. All right. So just make sure before and this is important before the treaty with the USSR, you don't so you don't waste the two times fifty percent research bonuses on. Uh, flak panzers and uh, SPGs. Okay, you want to get them beforehand. So just time that. All right, go down your focus. Take on once you've taken army innovations, you know, research those two. Okay, you don't want to be in a situation where you've kind of you've wasted your your head of time, your bonus, your arm, your armor research bonus on light tanks or whatever. It's never a good feeling. You don't ever want to do it. All right, so we've got our template. We've got a tank template. We've got our infantry template. So what's the next focus order? Well, we want to keep going down. We don't want to take army innovations too. We don't want to take Rhineland. We rush our extra research slot. We take army innovations, so air innovations too, rocketry, and then research slot. Boom, that gives us five research slots. That's really important. Uh, that's really strong. All right, so what's kind of like the priority in research? So we definitely want to get, let's say, we actually want to start coming down here a little bit. Eventually we need radio, but not till later on. And obviously our industry is really important. This is the kind of stuff we want to prioritize. And as soon as we get treaty with the USSR, we start researching uh, Panzer threes, okay, ahead of time. Now, this is the thing a lot of players I see, you can don't get Panthers by the start of the war. You should always have Panthers by the start of the war. So what happens when you've researched Pan Panzer threes ahead of time? You immediately research Panzer fours because you'll have two times 50% research bonuses for armor technology. Use it, boom, straight away, Panzer IV. As soon as that's finished ahead of time, boom, Panthers ahead of time. You've got a 50% research bonus, it'll take like a whole year to research, do it, all right? Done. Then you start the war with Panthers, and you start. You can start producing and fielding Panthers. They're brilliant, medium threes are gonna crush the Western Allies, and that's basically what you're gonna, you're gonna be using in Russia. All right, let's have a look at political power. What are the most important things for political power? Uh, basically the first thing you want to do as Germany is to switch on to free trade, okay? Uh, why are we going free trade? Because er and everyone on the axis should go free trade and that's because you can trade between each other, okay? So we're going to be 
Now, losing out on aluminium, we just buy that from Italy. We buy that from Italy and he buys two factories from us. He goes free trade, okay, and he'll be missing out on iron. He buys those factories from us. Say he needs more aluminium iron from us and we need aluminium from him, we just buy more aluminium even if we don't need it. Because we're on partial mobilization, we don't act, and the consumer goods factories are so low comparative to the allies, we're only losing a few, maybe one or two factories when we, even though we're trading a whole bunch of them, okay? So it's really strange. You trade between each other, you actually minimize your losses. Obviously when you're on civilian economy, it doesn't, necessarily, doesn't really make much sense to trade back, but when you're on partial and better, it makes sense. Okay, so we've got free trade. What's the next thing we do? We go captain of industry to make our civilian factories uh, produce, uh, construct faster. You're gonna be constructing civilian factories at least until 1938, okay, at least. All right, next one we can take is the silent workhorse to get us more political power. This is kind of debatable. I generally skip it, but it, most top players suggest you take it. Uh, the next one is the industrial concern. Why the industrial concern? And that is so that we can research uh, construction ahead of time faster, okay? So we can really race to this construction for, so it's not as painful. All right, next one, we want to get Heinz Guderian for the Blitzkrieg. All right, when we can, uh, that reduces our land doctrine uh, research time and it also gives us army XP. Uh, and we want to get the Henschel tank designer, okay? This is before, ideally, before we start getting in, stop getting to Panzer Fours, okay? So that when we start producing Panzer Fours and Panthers, all right, they actually uh, take advantage of the bonus. Uh, the also the really positive thing is the armor research time minus ten percent. So it's going to get us our uh, tank tank research faster. Uh, from here, you can go for the uh, KLS suggests you take uh, Mauser. I just think take uh, warfare industrialist war industrialist. This gives Military construction speed plus 10%. Uh, but you can also take, I guess if you've got, um, if you've got the silent workhorse, you can actually take more. So it's, it's quite fine. Uh, then you want uh, Rommel, once you've completed army innovations. Uh, you want as a cheaper star, here we go. Franz Hadler for the infantry. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, what else would you do? You want you want uh, where are we? The Gerd von Rutzland for division recovery. That's much more important than the other ones. Uh, you want for the planes, even if you're not going to be using them, you want S purity plus ten percent Hermann Goring. So e even though you're sending all your planes to Hungary, that's actually still going to make your your combat easier because the the malice for the enemy is still in effect even with um even though you're not controlling the planes. It's kind of weird, but it's the way it is. Uh, you can choose, KLS chooses the infantry expert. I think I actually go for division uh, attrition. It's kind of a weird choice, I guess. I don't know. I guess infantry is better. I just kind of hate taking attrition in Africa or anywhere really. It's the, maybe it's not debatable. It's, this is the one I do, but you can choose how the, the infantry makes more sense. I just feel like Germans never use their infantry, so. Yeah, you make make the decision you want yourself. Now, as soon as it's fifty percent world tension, you switch to war economy. You prioritize that, and also when you need more manpower, switch to extensive construction. All right, so let's get back to these divisions here that we've made Panzers, and we'll actually have produced eighty-two basically 80, eighty-two Panzer quote unquote divisions, even though they're going to be completely unequipped. All right, once we've uh, got the guns, basically. Once, uh, once the Civil War is over, we just flip them back to infantry, okay? And then we just make sure we make, re remove a leap from uh, the infantry and make them standard. And we make sure the Panzer Divisions are elite, okay? Easy. All right. Now, once you've, re once you've uh, researched uh, the Black Panzers and the SVGs, you can switch production around from light tanks here and maybe some planes whatever but just to get actually start producing the SPGs and start producing the flak panzers okay I think you can probably get away with two uh, once you've got a surplus of light tanks you can click on convert from stockpile and that'll actually make them really quickly so you don't actually need that many um, you don't actually need that many factories on these to put them out you should be able to force out by the start of the war 
um, six to eight divisions. You should actually be able to produce six to eight divisions. Uh, and that's more than you'll need, really, more than you'll need to beat France and to win Africa. All right. Let's start, let's go back to uh, focus order. So once we've actually completed this, we can actually take Rhineland and go for Anschluss. All right, now you'll notice that this is a uh, lang. So you, people often go like, oh, we want, don't you want to rush Anschluss? No, because you want to keep all tension low for a critical thing because you want Italy, okay, to be able to get claims on Yugoslavia without going over 15%. And you want them to be able to get war with Greece as well, justify on Yugoslavia at the right time. and you want Italy to get Yugoslavia and Greece, con conquer them both for free before World War II begins. So that your Italian player is as strong as possible. This often means you need to take delay Anschluss, okay? And just remember to take different servers or force you to take, generally force you to take Rhineland at different times. But if they don't, you can really actually delay it even further. You can take Army Innovations to really start delaying it. And that can really wreck the allies because you can keep all tension low. It's really really locks the allies out of a lot of focuses and a lot of really important things. So at some point you will have to take Rhineland. You want to take Angelus. Just uh, you tell you a trick, you can time Angelus right. Basically, you can take Angelus while uh, while Italy is doing war with Greece. When you get the prompt for Angelus, just hold it. You can hold it a month. Well, tension won't go up until you pre actually accept it, okay, until you actually click on it. Italy can declare war on Yugoslavia and Greece at the same time before it, before the allies can guarantee them. Then you can take Angelus and you've got all the factories in Austria. Now just keep in mind, you'll have your guns will walk always exceedingly low. Even if you put 10 factories on guns, you'll always be like, oh man, I'm running out of guns, Kane. You, you guys, terrible, I'm, I'm panicking. Don't panic, okay? You're gonna get free guns from Austria. They're gonna give you divisions, just delete them. And then you're gonna start going down uh, demands to date and land, first to get a reward, fate to check. Once you get check, you're going to get even more guns. Now, then you're going to start the war, World War II. You will start World War II with the deficit. Don't panic, don't panic. You're going to beat uh, Poland with ease, relax. Poland surrenders, you're going to hold a bunch more guns, okay? That's when you actually have full guns, and then you'll take the Netherlands and Belgium, you get even more guns. It's all good, right? So, I suggest you can start the war with 82 infantry divisions, 8 like tank divisions and you can train, make sure you're training cavalry uh, for suppression. Make sure you get rid of this waste of stuff. And this is your cavalry. This is your suppression, okay? Your suppression division. This is the most efficient, okay? All right, we've covered a lot. I know I probably missed something, but we're still not finished yet. So I've been always mentioning about sending the planes to Hungary. So once the war begins, you lend lease them all your planes, all right? Hungary is the plane controller. You give them all your planes. You beat Poland and you go west. You take the Netherlands. You take the Belgium. All right. Now, cracking France should be notoriously easy for you. You just attack provinces where you can, with your tanks. I don't care even if they've got like, most servers don't let you get level 10 forts, but um, so you should easily be able to crack level seven forts. That's pretty much the highest they can go. Uh, you just attack from multiple you just go to the, you send your tanks through here if you have to, and you attack from multiple directions. You build up some planning bonus if you have to, you'll crack them. Now, even if the French anti-tank guns can pierce your light tanks, this is why a lot of people say don't go to light tanks, no, forget it, go light tanks. It is the most efficient. Even if the French can pierce you, if you've got eight light tank divisions with SPGs, you can still break them, okay? They won't be able to cycle through fast enough. You'll still, uh, if you use up, if you use planning bonus, if you've got air superiority, you'll or just contested, you'll break them. All right. Now you'll see the French player will try and cycle divisions in. Now you'll notice that you'll be able to see them moving in. Make sure you block them from cycling by attacking with your infantry into the surrounding provinces. Okay. So if you're if you're trying to break this province, all right, and they're moving divisions in from here, stop them by using your infantry. Your infantry will lose the battle. It doesn't matter. You just providing your tanks enough time to crack them here or here or wherever, whatever the province is you're attacking, okay? Um, you Give your panzers enough time to break them, all right? Even if the French infantry can pierce your light tanks, you will still win, all right? I guarantee if the soft attack is still strong enough, you will break them, all right? And then once you've broken the four line, you can just rush in and circle and win. All right, we're almost there, we've covered a lot. What else do we need to go through? 
Uh, obviously, doctrines I think we've covered in the past, but I'll go through it again. So Germany always goes uh, right side mobile warfare. Okay, just you're always researching a mobile a, a land doctrine until you're finished as Germany. You just research one until you finish this whole tree. It is the most powerful. You get all the blitz. You get all the um, uh, breakthrough, which is the most important stat for tanks, and then that's yeah, that's your that's your win right there. All right, so now the other question is, when do you start building synthetics and when do you stop building civilian factories and start building uh, mills? So you need to have a look at the Allied plane count. You need to think, look at their, scout their focuses. Has the French player done Metropolitan France and then gone down to his building France workers? Is he building in France? This kind of really does determine whether you stop building civilians in 30 or halfway through 38 or at the end of 38 or you keep building civilians into 39 if you're super greedy that really depends because you can crack France with pretty much this all right depending on what the allies are doing all right depending on their strategy depending on their plan count depending on your plan count so honestly you want to build you want to, the ideal situation is to keep you know you just build civilians for as long as possible right but you also need to be able to crack France so if they're going, if the allies are going hard into France, you can play conservative and start building mills in 38, mid 38, even early 38, uh, and start building synths at that same time. But this, just be aware you're weakening yourself. If you keep building sieves deep into 38 till, till the end of 38, you're gonna be really strong. Then you switch to synthetics and then you can start mixing. So you build some synthetics and then start building mills. Make sure you, you leave room in the high infrastructure provinces for synthetics, okay? Uh, and you'll also, be getting going down you know whichever construct uh you know industry focus industry tree you want and that'll give you more room all right you want to build synthetics because they're the most expensive thing to build build them in the highest infrastructure provinces so they build faster yes a lot of the early game for germany in to make sure you don't get wrecked is to scout once you've scouted them like pay attention you know adapt to the situation scout out the the plane count scout out you know uh, metropolitan France, don't so you don't be taken away. Speak, remain in contact with your allies. Speak, if you're feeling uneasy about the plane count, be like Italy. Can you chuck? I know it's inefficient, but chuck on five to two production instead of uh, before you put on five to three production. All right, you know that's the kind of thing you can talk to, talk to your allies about them about that, so you don't get taken unawares. All right, so you've conquered France. What next? You quickly come. You send your tanks down here, and then you go to Africa. All right, that's the next phase of the war for the Axis. Uh, is to conquer, to conquer Egypt and to conquer French West Africa. Okay. At this point, before we get onto that, we want us to talk about whether you keep producing fighters, what what your what your production looks like. So, once you start building mills, you kind of have a choice. Do you play safe and build more planes? Do you play aggressive and build CAS? Or do you start building uh, medium tanks that you've researched? All right once you start chucking on uh, mills. Uh, obviously the best thing in the ideal world is to start chucking on medium tanks because that's that's gonna be your next best big thing that you're gonna do. But you know, if you're uneasy about the plane count, if you're, then it might be better to go uh, more fighters. So you just need to, it's a trade off. You need to think about it. You need to really pay attention. Once you've conquered France, stop building fighters. Change to CAS or change to tanks or both, all right? Uh, you don't need any more fighter ones because hungry hungry in Italy gonna have fighter threes. Don't bother building anymore. Switch switch off now. If you get fighter twos and threes as Germany by using the tech shanic strat, then you can keep building fighters. But I think that's inefficient. So for now, we'll just leave it as you stop building fighters and start building cas and tanks. All right. Now you like tanks come into Italy? You've got a choice. Are you, now if the you're like, oh, how do I get to how do I get to Tripoli with or you know. Serenica without getting, you know, intercepted by the Allied Navy. Well, here's a tip. You, you send, you give the order to the port. If the Allied Navy intercepts him, you click on another port. Guess what? They'll stop getting intercepted and go to that other port. They get intercepted again, you click on another port. You can, you'll never lose tanks over the sea to convoy raiding with this, with this tip, okay? Pay attention and you'll never lose. All right, you get here, you can choose between Cracking LMA in first or cracking French West Africa. I generally like cracking French West, Af West Africa if the French have deployed stuff here. A lot of times, for some reason, French players build tanks and they put them here. Just with light tanks, you just encircle them. It's so easy. And then you 
try and kill the entire French army here and here before you have to start going through this horrific mountainous terrain with your tanks. I hate doing that. You want to fight as the German player as little as possible. All right, you want to get the most bang for your buck because the attrition in Africa is terrible, all right? And the allies, it's the opposite. They want to force you to keep freaking fighting in this horrific terrain and grind you down, all right? Uh, so try and kill the, the French army here. Then you can let the Italians mop up the rest of Africa and then go back to Alamein, all right? Okay, Alamein. Alamein. Now, the next, before we get into that, you've got two choices. Do you move... I, I, I think, actually, you don't have a choice. You duplicate your tank division, so you have a light tank division, and then you have a med tank division, okay? All right. This one, you, this one now, you start swapping over... Oops, you start swapping them over to um, uh, medium tanks, all right? We'll research. Medium tanks, all right? You start switching them over to medium tanks. And just research. Shade somewhere here. Uh, Alright, so we want to start switching them over to medium tanks as our production allies. You can click, you can see how many medium tanks it requires. As long as you've got them, you start switching them, start building these tank divisions. You can even start converting the tank divisions you've already got. That template from the light tank template to your new med tank, medium tanks. And they'll still be have light tanks in them and you just start switching them over to medium tanks, okay? Alright, so our main, so... This is generally really easy. If you've got a really strong allied team, it's really hard. Get here, make sure the Italian player uh, garrisons these provinces with infantry so they don't get naval invaded behind. Make sure he's built up the infrastructure here and here. Make sure he's built up the port. So you don't get massive attrition on your tanks here. Then you can use planning bonus. Now, if you've got anti-air in your tank divisions, you can break Alamein with red air. If you, even if the allies have air security and cast, you can still break it. Build up planning bonus, and then cycle. If you've got eight tank divisions, you can just cycle attack them, all right? And break them at LNA, and then flood through. Um, high level games, it's, LNA is really tough, because this is kind of the first place that the allies have the advantage on you, right? Pretty much one of the only places where the Western allies really have a strong advantage for the, the German player. But you're going to have the advantage in that you're... So the faster you can deal with this, the faster you can deal with this, and the stronger you come out of that, the better. You rush down here and you crack them at Alamein. Generally, you won't have any trouble. You, even if the South African player builds heavy tanks, you should still be able to break them here and rush in, take the Middle East, all right? Let the Italian player mop up and garrison, and then get the hell out. Spain normally joins six months before the fall of France. You can take Gibraltar, then you locked off the whole Mediterranean. And that's super strong, all right? You pull your divisions back, you get out of the Mediterranean. Now, whilst you do, it's really important. Take over Switzerland, justify in Switzerland, occupy Switzerland, justify on, on Denmark, occupy Denmark, all right? Now, make sure you, man um, you manage the occupied territories. Uh, I can't show you here because you have no territories to occupy. But make sure you're on harshest for everything, okay? Harshest is the only occupation you should have, all right? Always harshest, all right? Uh, use your cavalry here, these cavalry brigades that you train, to suppress it, all right? Uh, do it manually as well. I know it's a pain. If you want the best results, doing it manually will mean that you get have the, use the least amount of suppression units for the greatest suppression, all right? The AI does it when you just give a suppression order. It just does it horribly. It's, it's, yeah, it's terrible. All right, we have covered a lot. Let's talk about air warfare. There's nothing to talk about because you don't research operational integrity, really. The Hungarian play does. Done. Air warfare done. <laughs> really simple. Now, the next step, once you've conquered France, you're going to start giving a bunch of territory to, to, belt, to Hungary, okay? You want to start giving them all the really rich industri uh, military, construct military factory areas you possibly can, even maybe Switzerland, right? So you want them producing as many fighter threes as possible. You're not going to be producing fighters. They're, they in Italy are going to be producing. You want more fighters then definitely want more fighters than UK, and you definitely want more fighters than the, than the Soviet Union. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Ideally, if you could produce more fighters than both UK 
and the Soviet Union combined, then you've just got the game in the bag, right? But you need to be able to contest air. So when D-Day happens, you want to be able to contest air here and contest air here. That's what you need to do. So give Hungary as much land as possible. You just keep building mills in Germany. The only thing you should be producing once you've started, once you've conquered Europe, basically, is some guns, some, very few, lots of tanks. 80% of your production needs to be on medium threes, all right? So what does your medium tank template look like for Russia? Uh, I will pretty much show you what I suggest, what KLS suggests, and what the meta generally is, okay? So uh, hopefully you've seen some of my, my armor template videos and none of this is kind of new to you. So you know the standard 15.5, if not, check out the uh, tank division templates that I've got. Uh, oops, so very simple really. All right, now I know I've spoken about this before. So you get, I choose to go pans, medium to anti-air, okay? Research that, you'll have to research it. It'll take you, should be about 150 days. All right, now critically, the next thing you have to do before you start producing them is you upgrade Okay, upgrade the attack, makes them much more powerful against anti-air. That means you only need two. To get 102 air, or 100 air attack. This is pretty much the template I use to go into, I use as Germany now. Um, I think this, and I will of course also, just to be safe, just so everyone just so you know 100% what you should do. Put on signal companies. And also, I this is debatable, I like logistics. So, signal, logistics, look at that initiative, get your reinforce rate. This is pretty much my tank division template. I really like it. I think it's really strong. You're just playing it safe at this point with the anti-air. Yeah? You're just gonna make sure that even if you get taken by surprise by the allied air power, you can still operate. Okay, so you know, if there's red air here, there's red air at D-Day, you don't get just wrecked, all right? That your tanks can still operate and you can surprise the American players, Marines, all right? So this is generally, if you've just got overwhelming air superiority, you can, uh, you know, you can change it out. Now, don't pay attention to the low organization. That's just because you haven't researched any uh, land doctrine. Like, yeah, see, 31 orc, that's fine. Uh, you can, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, 32 orc, that's fine. Really strong, that's perfect. This is what I generally suggest you can, but I mean, you can, Change a couple of mad. If you're just so confident you're going to win the air, you can do that. You can have one more med tank. It's up to you. So this is technically even stronger. You just have no air attack. So it's kind of, um, yeah, it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. Just make sure you get, make sure it's something like this, okay? Something like this. Oops. Very strong. Very strong. You should have no problems. Uh, you no problems with the Russians, no problems with D-Day, if you get this template, really. All right. Let's talk about number of divisions, when you want to start the war. Uh, now, once you're at war, you should be on extensive conscription. And here's the next thing you need to be on. So you'll be previously, okay, we can't do it. But uh, I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to show you a trick, okay? Once you're on extensive, before you go to total mobilization, and Germany, as long as the rules of the server allow, should always go to total mobilization, dump your manpower. When you've got about 82 divisions, you've got to dump more, but this is the order that'll let us produce, but dump your manpower into the pool. Go to total mode, then can't return the divisions to the pool. Basically, this is delaying you needing to go to service by requirement for as long as possible. Obviously, service by requirement has uh, malices for your your output, your industry output. Okay, so this is what's co commonly known as like the manpower trick. Uh, you should always do it. So, you go to war with Poland. You've got your eighty-two infantry divisions. 
that you pretty much need. But then you train a bunch more into the manpower pool, into this pool, so that you run your manpower down as low as possible, switch to total mobilization, and then you cancel all that, and all that manpower goes straight back to the pool, and you actually don't lose anything from uh, the 3% the recruit rule population from total mode. So very effective way not to incur any uh, malices there. All right. As I said, your production should be 80% Germany. As Once you've conquered Europe, your production should be 80% on. You can go to more guns if you want. You can build, go to more artillery, go to more support equipment, just to make sure everything's uh, everything's produced. You can even add on motorized. In fact, the more support equipment you add on, you'll need to start out depending on motorized if you have to. And then make sure you've got, you switch over these to your Ostland Panzer, these ones, your upgraded ones. And obviously the rest of your production really should be medium tanks. Now. Another thing, I want to correct a mistake that I see so many people making. They upgrade armor. Uh, there is no no reason to upgrade armor. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay? Because if the Soviet player gets T-44s, and he should, and he upgrades gun, he'll pen you. And what, may, what, happens, what, what happens then? He's got better tanks than you have. That's terrible. You don't want the Soviet player having better tanks than you. Alright? Armor is only good if you can get to a, like a... If you have more armor than they have penetration. Okay? Now, if they play properly you won't all right and on medium so on medium tanks there's no need to upgrade the armor if you're playing someone good so upgrade gun and then you can upgrade reliability just to make sure you're not losing anything so gun reliability and then i mean i suppose you can upgrade armor is, yeah but you'll be really running low on army XP at this point anyway unless you uh, grind poland for a while so gun and reliability then armor all right Gun reliability is what you should need, okay? So gun first, reliability, and then armor, all right? And I wouldn't even bother with armor. If you're going heavy tanks, for whatever reason, you can, I think it becomes a lot more viable to upgrade armor. But otherwise, gun, gun, gun. This is not debatable, honestly. This is not debatable because if both players, you and the Soviet Union, play properly, you'll pen each other's tanks, okay? So, yeah, armor is actually not debatable. It's gun all the way. All right, I can't really give you any tips on micro in microing and beating the Soviet Union. Other than you kind of want to, you can break through, you can break through in the north quite easily. Just make sure you can, you, so you've got Memel, just attack all three provinces so that you can't get counterattacked and encircled, and then you can make an encirclement here. And there's a critical city in Luau. If you can break here, you can generally make a salient up here and capture Soviet divisions here. And then once you've broken through here, it's plains. And you can start uh, breaking out into the plains with your tanks and making encirclements. The Soviet player, if he defends on the uh, Stalin line here, he'll build forts along all of here and build forts here. You should still be able to break him at Vitebsk. Although it's only one, like two provinces, you should still break him here. You get green out and then you break through here and you can start making encirclements. You can also cross the river, I think, at Kiev. Uh, the Romanian player will go Marines and he'll actually have a very good chance if he goes grand battle plan and does it right he could actually cross the river himself and then you can exploit it's kind of ironic isn't it like yeah so the Romanian player can actually get like some of the best divisions in the infantry in the game he can cross the river on his own and then you can exploit if you have distracted him with tank the Soviet player of tanks up here he can actually cross the river here and then you cross and then it's pretty much all over for the Soviet player all right uh, make sure you've got divisions in the west for D-Day all right have four or five tank divisions here. If you've got a Spanish player that's gone uh, mobile warfare and is building tanks, you can actually give him control of those divisions as long as he's decent micro, and you can just ex focus exclusively on the Eastern Front or you know, you can vice versa, whatever works best for you. All right, so I'll run down the national focuses just one more time, and I'll also tell you what you should do after Danzig War. So ideally, you rush here, you rush here, you get your extra research focus, then you do Rhineland, then you do Angelus, uh, Demand Sudetenland, First Vienna, Feta Czech, okay, Reassert Eastern Claims, Molotov, Rippentop, uh, sorry, Army Innovations 2, Molotov, then Danzig War. This is basically the standard rule set will force you to do this. And this basically means you get to the, you start the war late 39, you're in a very strong position. You can modify this if you have to based on the rules. Some of these might be a little bit Jumble, you might have to do Rhineland based on the rules earlier than you'd like. You might delay Anschluss so Italy can get uh, 
Yugoslavia and Greece for free if you want, otherwise just use the trick where you hold it. Once you've done Danzig or War, do a round Maginot line, which gives you the focuses on these guys. You've conquered Poland, that'll round Maginot line will finish. Take to make sure you justify on France as soon as you as soon as you start the war. Kill them, break in here. What do you do then? Well, if you're still building CAS, you can go to air production. So if you're building CAS, you can go to air production and send them, still send them to Hungary. Uh, air production is huge, uh, very powerful. Less powerful for Germany because most of your stuff is going to be on tanks and so tank producing focus. If there was, that would be broken. <laughs> the next thing, you can, if you're going down trade interdiction, so if you're going to start trying to wreck the allied convoys, you can do naval rearmament, you can start going down here and your research can start going down. Generally as Germany, you start running out of things to research, so going down trade interdiction can be kind of like an added bonus. Uh, I don't really recommend you're kind of wasting time on guns two or three, you can get them, but obviously research this stuff as it becomes like easy to research. Always research um, mechanized two, but don't produce any. So mechanized two increases the hardness of your motorized, that's why you research it, but don't, you know, don't ever produce it. Uh, you can, can't, I don't ever bother, I, mean, I generally don't bother, obviously get this one. Just unlock, unlock your excavation as you can and unlock your decryption as you can. Uh, you don't really need to rush it. Germany doesn't need to worry about building radar, get Hungary or Italy to do that and just give the provinces that you need to them away. Make sure when you uh, attack the Soviet Union, you build up the air bases and get the Hungary plague. You'll generally give Hungary Poland. Make sure you built up all the air bases here so you can just have overwhelming air security and don't neglect building up air bases in Western Germany. Okay, because when the Allies D-Day, you're going to need to swing your planes back here. There's nothing worse than not having enough bloody airports to contest air in Normandy, all right? Don't put yourself in that position. Build up your airports here so that even if they do some retarded landing here in Northwest Germany, you can still contest it there. And, you know, if they take, often sometimes a D-Day will take, you know, a large amount of the, you know, they'll take Normandy and here, here. So put them deeper into your territory so you don't lose the air bases, okay? You don't give them a 2000 uh, space air base, all right? Uh, if they D-Day in Spain, they're stupid because they won't be able to project air power. So you just rush tanks and you'll beat them. If they D-Day here, this is where they normally D-Day. Have your tanks ready, counterattack them once they've landed, push them out of the port. All right, it's been a long, long guide. Uh, last thing, I guess, research the submarines if you're going for trade interdiction, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope this guy has helped you. I think this is possibly the clearest, uh, most concise guide I think for Germany that there is for multiplayer online. Uh, if I've forgotten anything, uh, ask me a question in the comment section. I'll probably have to do another video on this, just clearing up all the stuff that I've missed. I'll leave a link to KLS's guide. Uh, it just goes through it in a Steam guide. He's made a terrific guide. And that's basically what I, what I use with my variations on it. Uh, oh, last thing, so the Atlantic Wall, actually I almost forgot the Atlantic Wall. I don't build it because I think even if you do build coastal forts on a bunch of these provinces or forts on the ports and whatnot, the good American player will still land. He'll just put battleships here and give the shore bombardment. He'll have so the world's best marines and your infantry are just not going to be able to stop it. The idea is not to stop him from landing, it's to then crush him, all right? It's to then break him. So he lands here at support. So he lands here, he's got the ports here, whatever, and then you counterattack with your freaking, your amazing tanks. And you just smash through Shaborg, you capture the port, and you kill all these Marines. I don't think against a good America it's really possible to stop a D Day happening. You just need to beat the D Day. That's all. Uh, that's my opinion on the Atlantic War, honestly, against good American players, against good allies. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's a waste of production. Generally, if you go to the um, Atlantic War, you have to switch off, switch to construction rather than doing just producing more casts or producing more. Uh, more submarines, I don't think it's worth it. So I don't bother with it. I just like winning in D-Days. Like they D-Day and then I just beat them, all right? That's what I think is the uh, best strategy for that. Um, yeah, thanks very much guys. Thanks for watching. Have any questions, chuck them in. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.